everyone. Thank you for finding me on this YouTube channel, Carol Cumber. Um, okay, so up to now, I've actually populated this YouTube channel with lots and lots of tools that I'm hoping will help you in your life generally and getting used to energy medicine and an approach to life and also focusing on that heaven on earth ability that we all have, focusing on the the higher vibrational life, taking the road of love rather than fear. Um, I really want to address the coronavirus issue at the moment and also this is Friday the 13th. So um, superstition and fear are very much obviously a part of humanity. The drive for self-preservation is incredibly strong and all of those things are part of our nature. So this isn't a high stance about moving out of that nature. It's about accommodating that nature. But what do we do with it next? What is the next step? So um, I'm asking you to consider how to best look after yourself. We've spoken before on these uh, YouTube channels about the fact that you have an aura, a soul skin, you have an energy system that is beautiful. It's light first and then it's the physical system after that as your organic frame. And if we look after ourselves and we've been focusing on quite a lot on the emotions and on the mental side and the physical. So if we're looking after ourselves really well, then this fills our aura with strength, with compassion, with love, with happiness, with strength, with wisdom and every single emotion that there is and every, every single emotion has a vibration and the higher the vibration, the stronger the energy field, the more healthy it is then that is a form of self-protection. So self-love, self-healing, um, actually, you know, there was a doctor um, who was uh, on Facebook the other day and she was saying, you know, look after your immune system. So if you take it purely on this level, do what you can to look after your immune system. So that's obviously eating well, get some fresh foods, uh, relaxing, getting really good sleep. Good sleep is very important for your immune system. And this doctor was actually saying, and the precursor to your immune system being well, is actually being in a neurological calm state. So this is, is confirming all that we've spoken of over the last year on this YouTube channel, to be in a calm state, more loving state, more happy state. So she was actually recommending that you do more things that bring you joy. You know, anything, whether it's going for a walk, whether it's reading a book, whether it's whatever it happens to be, it doesn't actually matter. It matters that you feed that aspect of your soul so that you are in a, a, a happier, stronger, more joyful state. Now, um, with this, with this latest, we've had viruses for a very, very long time. And uh, many of the disease specialists in the world are saying this will not be the last one. And our responses to it need to tighten. And I'm sure people, governments, everything else will learn from the experiences that we're all sharing as a global nation. And I, I really wanted to raise awareness of that. This is a global nation. Um, I was just listening on YouTube to a TED talk and um, a, a disease specialist there was saying she believes that uh, this is because of the, of the global warming and the fact that we're infiltrating a lot of our remote places. So we're disturbing, if you like, or, or, or uh, discovering new diseases because we're with animals and in particular bugs and various things that we have no immunity to so far. So that was an interesting view. Um, I've also seen that the earth is actually benefiting in some way from this because there's less industrialization going on right now. And I know it's a snapshot, but of course that helps with the global warming. So there's a lot of mixed feelings out there. Self-preservation is the first one, but xenophobia, you know, blaming different nationalities for different things like's happened in America recently is not the way 
it's not the way. <laughs> Hating's not the way. The panic buying that's going on is is definitely a drive from the self-interest point of view and self-preservation. So that's our reptilian part that's coming out to do that. Of course, you want to make sure that you've got enough if you're not breastfeeding baby formula for your babies. So if you take it all, it leaves none for others. I'm asking for us all to find a way of raising our vibration and going to that higher aspect of ourselves and just checking in with your heart and leading from your heart rather than a panic place in the belly actually leading from the heart as what is right for us. You know, we're very, very lucky in the West. We're very unlikely to run out of food during this particular pandemic. Um, and especially if we start looking after each other more, you know, do you know any uh, people who are vulnerable, who are elderly, who may be more at risk? Can you give them a ring? Have you given them a ring? Just to see if they're okay. Do they, does anybody who's actually put themselves into sci-fi, self-isolation do they do they need any shopping that you as a clear person who doesn't have it or can drop off what is it that you can do to help your community i was speaking to a lady last week who remembers the days after world war ii and how she said you know everybody came together it brought the best out in human nature that people would share what they had so that everybody could uh, move forward together, that nobody was left out and that everybody could move forward together. Um, I'm not talking from a high horse point of view. Um, at the moment, I've been uh, for four or five days every day in hospital at the moment in England and uh, with my mum, who's, who's very, very poorly. And I've watched firsthand how this virus is hitting our health service. So I think the health service was a bit busy before this began, but the labs for the swabs have gone in this one hospital that I'm attending has gone from five labs where any, vi any swab could be returned in two hours to 36 labs and people are waiting up to 72 hours so that in itself is obviously pressure that's going on within the health service they're worried because they've got no masks so it would be great if you didn't buy your masks because you have to obviously get this from the surface contact in eyes mouth whatever else and um they're all saying the masks won't help with the virus but actually the health service really needs it so that they can actually protect themselves and keep well so they can look after our elderly, look after the people who really, really, really need it. So I'm imploring you just to think a little bit before you act to see what sits within your own heart and to see what's best for you. There's also vulnerable people out there who are self-isolating and they're dependent on other people coming in to actually keep their life going. Not being just bored for a week, perhaps at home, or enjoying even a week of self-isolation at home. This is more like, um, you know, really dependent on every single basic necessity that many people will take for granted. And of course, if there's the threat of them having a coronavirus, how do the carers come in and, you know, actually assist and keep the basic necessities going. So it's just an idea to actually think about what it is you are deciding to put out in this world. We are the only ones that are responsible for what our hearts say, what comes out of our mouth, what goes in to our system and how to take self-care. So please, please, please have a look at the options. Is it love for you? Is it fear? I suspect everybody will run both. Um, I, th I think everybody will run both. But which one are you actually going to come in on and stay with? You know, um, you know, all our world media is well known for some exaggeration and fear mongering. So it's up to us to filter through what we feel is right. You know, let's listen to the people who actually know what they're talking about and and go from there. 
Um, I'm only picking up what I've heard from, from the disease specialist this morning and, um, and the medical profession because obviously they know far better than I do about these different diseases. But I'm just passing that message on that there's some good quality information out there that may actually help you in getting calmer about this whole thing. And if you do get into a fearful mm -hmm. state, then allow that to be because that's obviously as equally important as anything else. But do whatever you can to start bringing into your life more of the joyful aspects, things that you know calm you and relax your nervous system so that your immune system can get stronger and stronger and stronger and therefore you'll be protected in that way as well as all the general advice that's out there that I won't um, add to in this particular video. Um, I just find it's really ironic that it happens to be Friday the 13th that I'm putting this message out as well <laughs> as many people have lots and lots of superstitions and I've been speaking this morning to some people who find this their favourite day, they absolutely love that and they fly in the face of that superstition but also superstitions are a ground for fear it's like why do you have that superstition where's it come from is it being inherited from the family and other people around you is it environmental and it's nice to to really have a look at this fear of superstition where where is that belief coming from and have you borrowed it and therefore lived with it all of your life or is it something that um really resonates inside of you and you truly believe it if you truly believe it why do you believe it where is it coming from i love the root um causes of things and uh, i've been brought up in a family where we had a lot of superstitions so i've taken each one just because it it was interesting to me and thought right what's at the bottom of that why shouldn't we walk under ladders well Logically, it makes sense. If somebody's standing up at the top of a ladder with a paint pot, there is a possibility <laughs> you might end up um, a different colour when you come under the ladder at a different stage. But why, why are these? Why are these superstitions there? And are we feeding into the fear? Or are we choosing to heal the old information that is now no longer relevant? probably with health and safety regulations with the ladders, for instance. And which way are we going to choose? Are we going to choose the love way? Or are we going to choose the fear way? Just something to contemplate, I think. So to summarise then, please take care of yourselves. Love yourselves as much as you possibly can. Remember, by doing the things that bring you joy, it increases your immunity response, which is a great protection generally to anything anyway um, and yeah follow the advice of, of, of the medics out there who are saying wash hands wash hands wash hands wash hands make it a ritual make washing your hands a ritual coming into buildings coming out of buildings because it's a surface container it's a surface virus so keeping your surface of your beautiful skin on your awesome body is obviously absolutely fantastic and paramount. I'd also like to focus on what I'm grateful for today. I'm grateful for the care that my mum's having in the hospital. They are doing their absolute best and um, all the nurses I've met have been fantastic. Um, I have to go in, you know, a sort of with mask and gloves and apron and everything else as um, as a as a precaution until they get further information and uh, yeah everybody you know isn't it isn't it a better world if we actually look at it as a global response of everybody's doing the best they can um, and it's our responsibility for ourselves which way we're going to react to that fear or love it's up to you which one will it be do the things that are really beneficial to you. Boost that immune system. That will help your aura and everything stay strong. That will help others stay strong. So by serving yourself first, it's actually a wonderful way of a global uh, act in a way. Um, and then beyond that, 
please give people a ring, you know, who you think might be out there who are struggling with all this. And I find the elderly generation get more anxious and they're full of anxiety about things and they really worry. And if they're sitting in front of the TV all the time and all they're getting is this fear-based information, maybe a good old natter and a chat with somebody um, about normal stuff can break through some of that fear and you can remind them and ask them what they're doing. What are you doing that's fun today? What are you doing that's that's self-caring today that brings you a relaxed and calm manner? Maybe we can spread this as a love virus around the world. I've spoken about that for many years now. Let's be the love virus around this world. We can do it. Um, many seers over the years have talked about this time in our history about having to break down in order for a better society to actually be birthed i feel we're in it so every single decision we make as a, a, as one person can have an impact a ripple effect out there on everyone else so i wish you compassion i wish you care I wish you to receive a call from someone to say, hey, how are you doing? I wish for you to make that contact with someone that you think, oh, they might like a call or <clears throat> um, assisting in some way, shape or form. We can do this. We can be the kinder, better human. We can be the one that's more loving, more compassionate. We will make mistakes. I know I will. I have. Um, it's about going in on a more knowledgeable way and uh, loving yourself through it as best you can. Okay, everyone, hope this is of use. Love you loads. Bye for now. <laughs>